Okay, so I just, I'm gonna do my thing. This was me 15 years ago, waking up in the morning before work and whenever I got home right after work. Every day, the same thing, nine to five or six, seven, eight, sometimes nine to nine. Same thing, like a robot. Great job though. <clears throat> I was head of sales and marketing for a telecom company, making mad money. Could do what I want, go where I want. But um, after a couple years of this, it gets a little stale, gets a little boring. There's no fire, there was no passion. I had a passion. I enjoyed dancing, I enjoyed creating, but it was such a struggle, anything to feed that passion, that fire, it felt so great, but what's gonna pay the bills? So, plan B, go to school, get a good job, done, I'm set. I'm happy, I'm living the high life. But then after two years of this, this is what you get. Waking up, screaming. But wait, I just realized I haven't fallen asleep yet. How many of you know this feeling? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah. It's a dark place whenever you go through life. No fire, no passion. You feel like you just hit rock bottom. But it's okay, because people say when you hit rock bottom, the only place left to go is up. That's wrong. Sometimes you hit rock bottom so hard, you just keep sinking and sinking and sinking, and all that's around you is darkness. And that light that you had inside has been forgotten about. So what do you do? You gotta crawl. <laughs> You gotta crawl and you gotta look around. Why was I like this? It wasn't just the work, it was everything. Yeah, material possessions right in front of you. But look around, who, was, who were my friends? What were my other hobbies? What was I doing to nourish this passion and this fire that I once had? So, needed to change. Needed to make a big change. All right. Hello, work. I quit. Okay. Quit my job. Oh, <laughs> my relationship just ended. Why? Because I just quit my job. So, shows me right then and there that work was wrong. Relationship was wrong. Now my money's running out. Hey, friends. Let's do something indoors. Eh, we can't hang out with you. We are gonna do this. You can't afford that. Lost my friends. So all of that in front of me during that time was an illusion. Just temporary. All right. Start again. Back to basics. Basic job. Working reception. You know, go from shirt and tie, office, labels, and then shirt and tie, reception. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'd be lucky if someone even gave me eye contact. It was usually just a card. But I still found hope and joy, and that little light inside was starting to ignite again. Why? because I had the time to see the truth around me and start going to dance class again, to start listening to music, to start enjoying what I do. But it took a sacrifice. I had to sacrifice a life of fortune. I was rich, 
with material possessions, but I was not rich with emotion or passion or dreams. And it wasn't until I had to sacrifice and give everything up and commit to that, things started to become clear again. And a lot of the times, people say, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. Why isn't it happening to me? When is it my time? When is it my moment? Well, what are you doing for it to happen to you? You gotta take that step. And mine wasn't just a step, it was a plunge. Yeah? Dreams don't just happen, you gotta do the work. And that's what I did. So, after a couple years of working, for my dream, sacrificing for my passion, yeah, going from restaurants and steak dinners to tuna in a can, but it's okay, I get to dance. Sacrifice. Anyone ever been to Canada? Yeah? Canada is cold, okay? And the winters are long, so I decided to run away from winter. And just like my passion, just like my dream, going back to the roots with work, I went back to my roots, back to Vietnam. And here I am in this foreign land. No plan, no idea, no clue. I have three months here. This was 10 years ago. And I'm looking, what am I gonna do for three months? I don't speak the language. I thought I did until I got here. I don't. I do now. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was really back to basics. And I had a lot of time, a lot of time to think, to focus. I had no distractions, yeah? No terrible circle of friends, no toxic work, no, no distractions around me to really think about what I was going to do. So. Put yourself out there. All right, I'm gonna step out into this foreign land. I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what people are saying. I don't even know if they're laughing at me or with me. Usually it's at me. Slowly, you network. You meet people. You put yourself out there. You have to make a fool out of yourself. You have to take that risk. Meet that person, try to speak to them their way, in their language, interact with them. Half of the time I failed, but it's these failures from these risks that I took that helped me. And then getting to get involved with more of the cultural aspects of the country and the artistic aspects of the country, meeting dancers, meeting other artists, other choreographers, producers and directors. I'm like, ah, oh, I've made it. These are the people that I need to be around. They call me, let's do a show. All right, I'm ready, I'm here. What's our show? This is my idea. We have 10 dancers here and we have ribbons coming down from here and I want lights from back there and then no. Why not? Mm, it's too risky. And I'm like, yeah, but we can be the first ones to do it. Let's be the first ones to do it. And they're like, uh, it's too risky. And then they, open the laptop and like, hey, look at this. Uh, this was on a TV show two years ago. We're gonna do this. And I'm like, okay. Okay, 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 we'll, we'll go with it. Maybe it's the first time, my first big job here, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna push too hard. But then after a while, it becomes a pattern, but not with just big events, but with almost anything. There was that fear of taking risks. And I'm like, where does this fear come from? Where did it come from? Why? Why is there this fear of taking a chance, being creative, taking that risk? And they explained to me their education. And after hearing about it, I was like, oh, that was your education in Vietnam? Okay, it's not very different from my education in Canada. Anytime it was, oh, this boy, me, he's different. He's weird. He has too much energy. He's trying different things, yeah? Growing up, you hear, you're different, and that's bad. And it sticks with you until you grow up. 
You're like, I don't want to be different. I want to be liked by everyone. I want to do what everyone else is doing. I want that acceptance. Yet deep down inside, we want to have a one-up on everyone, yet we're willing to take that risk, right? So I've been fortunate enough to meet other incredible people who shared that same idea. People from Vietnam, people outside of Vietnam who have come here. And we all work together, yeah? We all work together with different companies, with different agencies, and we say, let's do it. Let's make a change. Let's do something big. Let's do something amazing. Get those wheels going. Let's be creative. The energy is so great. Everyone's with us, and then they say, okay, how do we do it? I don't know. I can't teach you to be creative, right? We can't teach creativity. We can inspire. We can help through laboratories and workshops by giving people the tools and the skill sets and the nerve to dare. And that's what I have after 11 years in this country, meeting amazing people, amazing artists, amazing dancers. I've hand-selected these incredible, talented, young kids. And at first, it was just me. I'm going to teach you jazz. I'm going to teach you ballet, hip-hop, whatever. I'm going to teach it all to you. I'm going to teach you how creativity works. I can't teach you what creativity is. And then they asked me, oh, teacher, can we try this? Sure, why not? Oh, but it might look stupid. Yeah, of course it might, but let's try it. Maybe it'll look stupid. Maybe it'll look good. Maybe it'll look stupid good. Who knows? So 11 years now, these amazing kids who had their creativity stepped on for so many years. But still, like me, they had that light inside, but they just needed to ignite that fire. And now, these kids dare to be great. They dare to be amazing. They have the skill sets. They have everything that it takes to try something new and be different. I would love to present to you, UDG.
So I just wanted everyone to see, with dreams and passion, commitment and sacrifice, anything can happen. I've inspired them, they've inspired me, and I hope we have inspired you. Thank you. And these dancers are? Uh, uh, Mantala Wei. Mantala Lam. Uh, chào mọi người, mình tên là Mỹ. Uh, mình tên là Trâm Anh. Sabra. Mình tên là Hữu Phước, mọi người thường gọi mình là Ly. Chào mọi người, mình tên là Xoay. Hello, uh, mình là Tân Nguyễn, aka Red Cat. Hello, mình là Minh. Thank you.